Okay, let Burhan Yehun Allah. Let there be light. So as we're reading in the book of Judah, in the book of Jude, what does it say right here in Jude um, chapter, chapter, well it's one chapter actually, but verse 8, it says, likewise also, right, all these haters of his majesty and of, of Christ and his kingly character, they defile the flesh, they despise dominion, they speak evil of dignities, right, they speak evil of dignities, of the dignity of his majesty. Yet Mikael, the archangel, who... When contending with the devil, Diablos disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. You understand? And such we say to them, may John rebuke them. You understand? For all their enmity against his imperial majesty. Right? But what does it say furthermore? But these speak evil of those things which they know not. They speak evil of those things. They speak evil of his imperial majesty. They speak evil of our Ethiopic testimony. But they don't even know it. They don't even know the language. You understand? Um, they, a few of the Europeans did well. But you can see that not many of the Europeans followed up because all of these works that we bring forward to you all, such as the Gedla Adam, when was this translated? You understand? This was translated right here. Let's get more light. This was translated back in what? 18. Let's turn it around right here. In 18. You see that right there? In 1882. You understand? In 1882. Same with the Book of Jubilees. Yeah, there's some new versions out there, but I would be very, very cautious of some of these new versions. You understand? Of these new versions, because new versions have a lot of perversion. It's time for I and I to testify and be a witness to the King of Kings and his Christ. So first we have to study and show I and I selves approved. You understand? As workmen, you understand that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing and explaining the word of truth. But these, these apostate teachers of counterfeit Christianity and white supremacy, they speak evil of those things which they know not. And if you don't know something, you're what? Ignorant of it. So they speak evil of those things they're ignorant of. But what they know naturally, what they know even by their own nature, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. In those things they corrupt. Notice everything that they learn. They learn some new thing that can better humanity, and they always use it for some vain reason. You know what I mean? Look at the Internet. I mean, look at so much of of the technology and other things that can actually sustain human life and make life better for all, you're going to use these things to enslave, they corrupt themselves. Verse 11 says, Woe, woe yo lacho, woe to them, woe is for them, for they have gone in the way of, you see what it says, the way of Cain. Now remember, Cain now connects with those daughters of men. Right, those daughters of men, and ran greedily after the era of Belam, 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 for reward. You know, say like the prosperity preachers and the prosperity God spell, Gad spell, and they perish in the saying of of Korah, of Korah. Right, and it goes on to say that these are spots in your feast of charity. The feast of charity was agape, when 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 the church got together, it was like what we call it, um, like a Ital feast. You know, like we come together and we eat, and we sup together, make I and I sup together. That's what that's what those feasts of charity were, the love feast. When they feast with you, they come and eat in with us. It's what said the Lord prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You know what I'm saying? Feeding themselves without fear. Feeding themselves without any reverence, any reverential trust of Jah, and any hatred of what Jah considers evil. Clouds, they are without water. So they come around like clouds, but they don't got no water. You know what I'm saying? Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth. You know what I'm saying? Trees that don't have no good fruit without fruit. Twice dead. Notice that. Twice dead. You know what I'm saying? Those who are 
who are born once die twice. Those who are born twice die once. These are twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You know what I'm saying? And don't get that blackness of darkness twisted. You know what I'm saying? Study the language. Get in the roots. Get, get over white supremacy. And Enoch, Hanoch also, the seventh from Adam, he prophesied of these. Enoch, saying, Behold, look and see Adoni, Adonai. He cometh with ten thousand of his saints, of his caduceus. You know what I'm saying? Of his caduceus. This is where you know, the extraterrestrial link, and they're trying to confuse y'all, you know what I'm saying, and confuse us about that whole aspect of it as we hopefully will be able to um, demonstrate going forward in this particular reasoning right here. But it says to execute, so these 10,000 of his caduceus are for what purpose? To execute judgment, like Psalm, what, 149, the written judgment. You understand? This honor have all the Kedusan, his saints, Kedusanu, to execute judgment upon all and to convince, persuade all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, like white supremacy, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken, you understand, have spoken against him. All the ungodly sinners who have spoken against him. This is our role. This is our responsibility to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of the ungodly deed which they have ungodly committed. Which they have ungodly committed of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against. His Imperial Majesty Kedamawi Haile Shalasi against the Ancient of Days. Now, moving forward, who are these people? You understand? Know these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, after their own, in the words of one of their their scholars, their scholars Freud, walking after their own unconscious desires. Right? And their mouth speak of great swelling words, you know, they, they, because they're educated. You understand? So they speak great swelling words. They are theologians, right? Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So they have certain people in admiration because they want to get something. Verse 17 says, But beloved, remember ye, remember y'all, don't y'all remember? The words that were spoken before of the apostles of Getachin, Jesus Christos, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, in this 2012 last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lust, after their own reptilian subconscious desires. Verse 19. These be they who separate themselves now from those of us who are irithical or spiritual. They separate themselves sensual. They are sensual. They're, they're, they're really sexy. They're sexy, sexy, sexy. Having not the spirit, they are sensual. Mm -hmm. That's a deeper point in that as well. You know, the question is, does the white man... You understand? Especially does the white supremacist man, does he really have a soul? Does he really have a soul? And what is his goal? You understand? Well, his goal is Satan's agenda, whether he recognizes or not. He is deluded. He is deceived. Part 5, to complete the general epistle of Judah, of Yehuda, especially to the Negroes, blacks, and colors, the Afro-American, we have to understand that we are Judah in the diaspora, Part 5 says that the true Amanyo, or Mitmanon, are assured and comforted. And there's a sevenfold duty. There's a sevenfold duty that we have. Can you name the sevenfold duty that comes as disciples? Well, let's go through it. Verse 20. It says, 
But ye beloved, but ye wadajot, ye lovers of the King of Kings and his Christ, ye ye friends, you you beloved ones. Building up yourselves, right? Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. We have to build up ourselves upon our most holy faith. And let's see if we can get this right here. Um, upon our most holy faith. Can't find that right, right, right now. Can't retrieve that. Um, the Didis, the Didiscalia, you understand? The Didiscalia. Well, 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 you know that we've we, we've talked on it, we've touched on it. We just can't find a copy right now, just to show you the cover. But you can go to the books, the books page. But 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 let's just start off, right? Let's just start off with. The gospel of his imperial majesty, building up I and I selves on I and I most holy faith. This is not the painting of a man. This is not based on imagination. This is based on reality. This is reality. You understand? You understand? And, and all should know who he be. But if you see these other pictures around there, these are the delusions they get caught up in. This is the work of their own hands. And you see all these crazy... These crazy Christ, you understand? Look all these crazy Christ around here. These are all these crazy Christ. You know what I'm saying? Not like the word from their own imagination, but this is, this is truth. You know what I'm saying? This is Him. So we have to build up in ourselves on our most holy faith, the Ritua Haimeno, the Tawahedo faith of the King of Kings and His Christ. Oh, All right, so. Let us just continue right here. So the first is to build up ourselves. You understand? To build up ourselves on our most holy faith. Not even his holy faith, but our very most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, you might have ghosts in your Bible. That's, that's how white supremacy, you know, gets tricked by that. Because people see it in the King James, and they keep saying to this day, even though a ghost is an evil spirit. You understand? A ghost is a disembodied spirit of a dead person. In other words, a dead person whose spirit is not at peace, that is not in shalom. You understand? But it's not Holy Ghost. It's Memphis Kedus in the Hebrews, Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Verse 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God. So thirdly, we must keep ourselves in the love of God. We must actively do that. And it says, if you love God, you keep his what commandment, right? Looking for the mercy of our Lord, of Getach and Jesus Christos, to eternal life. Not just looking for mercy of our Lord, but looking for the mercy of our Lord, Jesus Christ, to eternal life. Then it says, of some have compassion making a difference, and others, over saying others, Save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments. Even though we pull them out the fire, we may hate the fleshy garment that is spotted by the flesh. You know what I'm saying? We hate that garment which is spotted by the flesh. You understand? And now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. You see, the only wise God who is our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Now, let's just complete this here and just hear their rhetoric here. You, you all right? Let's just complete this, go forward with this. 
There we go. Programs like Ancient Aliens on the History Channel and attempted to describe these sons of God as being aliens from outer space. This is wishful thinking. The reality is that these fallen angels were rebels to God and not some race of aliens from a faraway galaxy. In fact, the whole idea that there might be an alien race from outer space is part of the world border deception. But we'll get back to the UFO and the alien phenomenon a little bit later. But for now, let's continue on with what the Bible says about these sons of God. What the passage portrays, and it's very difficult for many people to absorb this, it portrays fallen angels. These are not the good guys. Remember when Satan fell, a third of the angels fell with him. Not all of them, but a group of them, apparently. chose to try to create a hybrid race by cohabit by, by I don't know the technology. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into that. But they apparently uh, uh, were see, angels can't multiply. Angels are eternal. There's a reproduction is a process for mortals. But at the same time, Satan's got a problem. A third of the angels fell with him, so he's got a deficiency of two to one in the award that comes. Find a, find a way to strengthen himself. This may be, this is a good uh, conjecture that floats around. Now, the offspring and Nephilim are also called the Hagibarim, the mighty ones. And uh, now, where the confusion starts to set in is when this Hebrew passage was translated into the Greek in the Septuagint, the word they used for the Nephilim was Gigantis. That's interesting. That's interesting right there as well. Now, you, you want to get some more foreground on this? Since I think we had this on pause for for a good moment. It should have come back on. Maybe we'll put it on. Put on pause from there? Okay. Put it on, put it on pause right there. So, it, it expressed in here that when it was translated, this, this area of scripture, in Genesis, chapter 6, I think roughly around verse 3, when it was translated, that the word Nephilim, which also is in the Ethiop, Nephilim, or Nephile, means those who act foolishly, right? The fallen ones, Nephal in the Hebrew, to cast down, or to fall, to cast, to um, down, to fall away, to desert, the deserters. And then it says, um, um, also it uses the Ha Giborim. Now, Gibor is interesting too because Gibor Bamarinya is Gebere is is the Gebere. You understand the Gebere and, and, and Gibor is used as a strong man. It can be used in a positive sense and it can be used in a negative sense. You see what happens with a lot of the the, the Gentile white Western Christianity is because this material is new to them. You know, and this is not part of their culture, no matter how many whitewashed pictures they create, so forth and so on. It's something that's new to them. So everyone else in the world who's relying on their interpretation or misinterpretation now gets further deceived. Remember, Satan doesn't have any power, but he throws these thoughts, thoughts into their mind. So automatically when they now whitewash Yeshua, you see, that's where the major error comes in through the Kaiser Borgia, the Caesar Borgia um, image, or the white Jesus image, the 1492 Caesar Borgia. Now, here, once again, um, in this particular document right here, we're going to touch on something very interesting in, in the Gedla Adam. We're going to actually go to that chapter so we can really find out who these sons of God really were. Because we know that the Septuagint has not accurately or properly translated many of the, you know, many of the central elements. And now this has caused great confusion to white Christianity, which, 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 which um, exalts the Septuagint, even Old Testament, over the Masoretic or the Ethiopic, because, remember, Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic. It's the Afro-Semitic language, Afro-Shemitic. And the Ethiopic is, is also Afro-Shemitic. So this chapter here that we found while studying this, 
right, while studying this, um, 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 the Gedla Adam, the book of Adam and Eve, and we'll, we'll touch on, though there's, there's much here, and those who have a copy of this or can get it on the internet, we would definitely suggest that you um, study this. It happened in the days of Jared, in the days of Jared. In fact, when we see the death of Jared, right, it, um, when we talk about the death of Jared and when he died, it actually gives the, the exact date um, of his death in the Ethiopic. And what is interesting about the Ethiopic um, date for the death of Jared, it is actually December um, 21st, that very same day that they call the December 21st, uh, 2012, in, 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 in the Ethiopic, when we see the death of, 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 of Jared. Let me see if I can find where it talks about the death of um, Jared, because it was in the time of Jared, which, which in the Hebrew be Yared, and in the Amharic, the Ethiopic, will be Wered, and Wered, as in the Hebrew Yared, means um, to descend, to come down. Because the children of Cain, right, dwelt in the lowland or in the valley, and the children of Adam, you'll say, or the sons of Seth, they dwelt on the mountain. They dwelt on the mountain top. All right, and you can also find this in I think it's that book, um, the Lost Books of the Bible, and the Forgotten Books of um, the Forgotten Books of Eden. So let's let's see if we can get into a portion of this. We'll begin roughly around um, the Book of Adam, chapter X V I I, or chapter seventeen. Then Yared or Jared kept his father's commandment and arose like a lion. He rose like a lion over his people. He fed them in righteousness and innocence and commanded them to do nothing without his counsel. For he was afraid concerning them, lest they should go to the children of Cain, the children of Ayan, that they should follow the way of Cain as um, Jude chapter, well, the one chapter, verse 11, says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. So there's something about the way of Cain and Yared. He recognized this in his day and his time. Right? So then it goes on to say, um, Wherefore did he give them orders repeatedly and continue to do so until the end of the 485th year of his life? And at the end of these years, there came to him this sign, as Yared, or Jared, was standing like a lion before the bodies of his fathers, praying and warning his people, Satan envied him and wrought a beautiful apparition, because Yared would not let his children go, uh, his children do aught, do anything without his counsel. Satan then appeared to him with thirty men, of his host, in the form of handsome men, Satan himself being the elder and tallest among them, with a fine beard. So he even came like as a Hebrew. You understand? He came with a beard, not as a Greek, not with clean face. This is why you see a lot of their pictures of Jesus and people in the Bible with beards. But then you look at them, and a lot of them have clean faces like Greco Romans. And you say, what's up with that? All right. Um, there's something about the worship also um, in that early time, which is similar to ancient Egypt, because this is the bodies of his fathers, that they wrapped the bodies, they embalmed the bodies. They, it was in a cave. That cave was a cave of treasures, similar to the burial practices, the pre-pyramid burial or the pre-dynastic burial practices in ancient Egypt as well. But we're not going to get into that right here. So. They, Satan and his company of 30 um, men of his host, of his Sarawit, his Tabaot, because he's the Yaldabaot of the Gnostics, they stood at the mouth of the cave and called out Jared from within it. He came out to them and found them looking like fine men, full of light and of great beauty. 
he wondered at their beauty and at their looks and thought within himself whether they might not be of the children of Cain. So you see like identity theft right here as well, like the whitewashed Jesus, right? He said also in his heart, quote, as the children of Cain cannot come to the height of this mountain, and none of them is so handsome as these appear to be, and among these men there is not one of my kindred. They must be strangers. They must be forenjoch, strangers by idlejoch. Then Yared, then Yared and they exchange a greeting. They exchange salamta. And he said to the elder among them, O oh, my father, explain to me the wonder that is in thee, and tell me who these are with thee, for they look to me like strange men. Then the elder began to weep, and the rest wept with him. And he said to Jared, I am Adam, whom God made first. And this is Abel. My son, the J, who was killed by his brother, Kyan, into whose heart, say, God, what to murder him? Right? Now, 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 check this out. This is just like they do on a lot of these whitewashed Christian shows and everything. They put on a good game. Remember, Jared was cautious to protect his people. He thought there would be some hoodwink and bamboozling. You understand? But now Satan, the enemy of humanity, of the black man, he watched and he, he watched just like when they do experiments and they go places and they, and they like look at the native tribe and we're here in the bush right now, we're looking at them and this is how they do things and, and he comes to them and he speaks their language. Ogoka, bogoka. And, and, you know, the, 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 the native is so impressed like, wow. You know, you speak our language. Are you the uh, God? Are you Quetzalcoatl? You understand? Yes, I am. It's the same thing that happened to the to our uh, Hispanic brothers in South and West Central America. You remember when they thought the feathered one was coming back and everything like that? And who was it? These 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 um Don Juans. You understand? After they had killed the black Jews and 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 the black Muslims. You know, in the black Christians in the time of Isabella, you know, El Cid and all of that pushed them back into Africa where some of them started to call themselves Moorish, Morocco, and fly that flag and everything like that. You understand? Know so this is what the elder among them said. The elder said he was Adam. This is like when you see the white Jesus picture. I wish we could scroll to one of the white Jesus pictures right now in this vid. You understand? Know he said he was Adam. You understand? And so he flipped the whole script, right? He goes on to say, Then this is my son Seth, whom I asked of the Lord, who gave him to me to comfort me instead of Abel. This then one is Enos, son of Seth, and that other one is Kainan, son of Enos, and that other one is son of Cain and my, my father. But Jared remained wondering at their parents and at the speech of the elder to him. He's wondering, like, what's good? Is that when you see the African man in the bush and the white man coming, speaking his language and everything? You know, and he's, like, wondering, like, what's going on? You know what I mean? And, and you could just, I mean, this, you know, we're making a, not even light of this, but we're trying to describe, we're trying to get the point across to you. But um, 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 just think about what's about to happen right here. You know what I'm saying? And we've seen this over and over with tribe after tribe after tribe after tribe after people. Because remember, Satan is the hater of humanity, especially black humanity. You know what I'm saying? Then the elders said to him, Marvel not, O oh my son. We live in the land north of the garden. North. We live in Europe. In Europe. Which God created before the world. He would not let us live there, but placed us inside the garden below which you, y'all, are now dwelling. But after that I transgressed, 
See, he's trying to play Adam. He's, he's trying to be Adam. He made me out. He made me come out of it. And I was left to dwell in this cave. Great and sore troubles came upon me. And when my death drew near, I commanded my son Seth to tend his people well. And this, my commandment, is to be handed from one to another to the end of the generations to come. But, oh, Jared, 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 sounds like the jeweler, right? Jared, my son, we live in beautiful regions while you live here in misery. This is the same kind of trick they did with the Ethiopians, the careless Ethiopians who turned against Kedus Abatachin against Abba Kedus against Kedemawi Kaila Shalasi, Haila Shalasi first. That caused the whole Haila Shalasi first blame game. You understand? They're basically saying that y'all are living here up in Africa in misery. We, we live in the north. As this thy father, Mahalaleel, informed me, telling me that a great flood will come and overwhelm the whole world because he said I was watching, he was eavesdropping. See, that's why he's so good at this now. You know, saying white supremacy, could they learn this from the devil? Yes. Therefore, O oh my son, fearing for your sakes, I rose and took my children with me and came to hither for us to visit thee and thy children. But I found thee standing in this cave weeping, and thy children scattered about this mountain in heat and in misery. Wow, it was hot up here in Africa. But... Oh, my son, as we missed our way <laughs> and came as far as this, we found other men below this mountain who inhabit a beautiful country, just like the USA, full of trees and of fruits and all manner of verdure. Oh, verdure, I know it's greenness, right? It is like a garden so that when we found them, we thought, they were you, until thy father, Mahalalil, told me they were no such thing. Now, therefore, my son, hearken to my counsel and go down to them, you and thou and thy children. You will, you will rest. You will have a Shabbat then. What a wonderful Sabbath from all this suffering in which you are. It's only when he told blacks to come from the south up to the north, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of thing. But if thou will not go down to them, then arise, take thy children and come with us to our garden. Ye shall live in our beautiful land, and ye shall rest from all this trouble which thou and thy children are now bearing. In other words, they were basically saying to these original Africans, Come to Europe as refugees. It's beautiful up here in Europe. You know, with some indentured servant slavery that was going on, right? You know? So he, they say this, but Jared, when he heard this discourse from the elder, he wondered and went hither and thither. He went to and fro. But at that moment, he found not one of his children. Then he answered and said to the elder, Why have you hidden yourselves until this day? And the elder replied, If thy father had not told us, we should not have known it. Then, then Yared believed his words were true. You see, this, is, this kind of reminds me of this end time deception that they're working on too. It's, especially if you're in that white Jesus kind of thing. You know, and so the elder said to Jared, Wherefore didst thou turn about so and so? And he said, I was seeking one of my children to tell me about my going with you and about their coming down to those about whom thou hast spoken to me. When the elder heard Jared's intention, he said to him, Let alone that purpose at present and come with us. Thou shalt see our country. If the land in which we dwell pleases thee, we 
and thou shalt return hither and take thy family with us. This is what they did with the Falashes, Beta Israel, when they enlisted them to Jezreel, I mean, the state of Israel, right? But if our country does not please thee, thou shalt come back to thine own place. You know, you, you, you know that hasn't happened. That's about the same thing they told the Negroes, Blacks, and Colors before they were Negroes, Blacks, and Colors in Africa on the USS Jesus. You know, if you don't like it, you can come back. You know, that's, that's the same trick they play. They keep playing that same old trick. But notice this. The devil can't even read mine. He had to play some game and weed out of one, their intention. And the elder urged Jared to go before one of his children came to counsel him otherwise. Jared then came out of the cave and went with them and among them, and they comforted him until they came to the top of the mountain of the sons of Cain. Then said the elder to one of his companions, We have forgotten something by the mouth of the cave, and that is uh, the chosen garment we had brought to clothe Jared with all. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. He then said to one of them, uh, Go back, thou. Someone, and uh, we will wait for thee here until thou come back. Then we will clothe Yared, yeah, yeah, and he will be like us, good, handsome, and fit to come with us into our country. Then that one went back. But when he was a short distance off, the elder called to him and said to him, uh, Tarry thou, stay thou until I come up and, and, and speak to thee. Then he stood still, and the elder went up to him and said to him, One thing we forgot at the cave, it is this, to put out the lamp that burns inside it above the bodies that are therein. Then come back to us quick. See, so notice how in this early time of Adam and Eve, the original black Adam family, notice how in this particular time that it was similar to Egypt. They had the embalmed bodies. This was the worship. You know what I'm saying? This was the worship that, you know, this, this was the worship. You know, so this, this also points it to an African root and origin because they don't have nothing like this in, in Europe among white people or the Gentiles. Then one went, and the elder came back to his fellows and Jared. And they came down from the mountain, and Jared with them, and they stayed by a fountain of water near the houses of the children of Kai and of Cain and waited for their companion until he brought the garment for Jared. He then went, he then who went back to the cave, put out the lamp, and came to them and brought a phantom. He brought a phantom, what we call Balmarinya, a mitahet. The mitahet or the mitahat is actually a ghost. Is a ghost. Right? That's a ghost. That's the word for ghost, a phantom, like Fantasia. They brought back a phantom, a ghost an apparition with him, and showed it to them. And when Yahweh saw it, he wondered at the beauty and grace thereof. And he rejoiced in his heart, believing it were all true. It's like this delusion that's going on right now. Like Negroes really believe that they're, they're rolling their money, that they're rich, that they're free, that they emancipated. It's a phantom. But notice how this phantom wasn't like a phantom person. It was a phantom garment. Yehovah said, a phantom garment. So he looked at it, and he really believed what he saw was true. And we know that they're good at this, even today. I mean, even with the CGI, you know, the, the techniques in the movies, where people believe what they're seeing on the screen, the Bible talks about believing the image of the beast. But while they were staying there, three of them went into the houses of the son of Cain and said to them, bring us today some food by the fountain of water. For us and our companions to eat. But when the sons of Cain saw them, they wondered at them and thought, These are beautiful to look at, and such as we never saw before. So they rose and came with them to the fountain of water to see their companions. They found them so very handsome that they cried aloud about 
their places for others to gather together and come and look at these beautiful beings. Then they gathered around them both men and women. Then the elders said to them, We are strangers in your land. Bring us some good food and drink, you and your woman, to refresh ourselves with, with you, to refresh ourselves with you. When these men heard these words of the elder, every one of Cain's sons brought his wife, and another brought his daughter. And so many women came to them, everyone addressing Jared either for himself or for his wife, all alike, all in the same way. But when Jared saw what they did, his very soul wrenched itself from them. Neither would he taste of their food or of their drink. The elder, this false, fake elder, which is really Satan, saw him as he wrenched himself from them and said to him, Be not sad. I am the great elder. As thou shalt see me do, do thyself in like manner. Now, these are the same tricks that these demons play on white supremacy when they do all their, their occult magic and they talk to the great white brotherhood you know, and the great white elders and all this other kind of stuff. Then he spread his hands and took one of the women, and five of his companions did the same before Jared, that he should do as they did. But when Jared saw them working infamy, he wept, probably really this was being buggery, he wept and said in his mind, my fathers never did the like. He thought in his mind, in his thought, my fathers, his true black fathers never did this. You know what I'm This is boisterous fornication of white supremacy. He then spread his hands and prayed with a fervent heart and with much weeping, and he entreated Ha Elohim Baruchu, blessed be he, to deliver him from their hands. No sooner did Yared begin to pray, then the elder fled with his companion. Do you see what happened? As soon as he began to elope, as that's why they want to stop you from prayer and have you so busy, have you so tired, have you so worn out, have you playing their video games, have you doing any other thing, you understand, than getting and keeping in touch with your Heavenly Father in the name of Yeshua. They want to you do any other thing. So no sooner did Yared begin to pray, then the elder, Satan in disguise, fled with his companions, for they could not abide in a place of prayer. They could not abide in a place of prayer. Then Yared turned about, but could not see them, but found himself standing in the midst of the children of Cain, standing in the midst of the children of Cain. He then wept and said, O oh, Jah, O oh, God, destroy me not with this race. Notice that the race has split into two forms of the black race, into two manners of black people. That's why we have the righteous Africans and the unrighteous Africans. That's why we say you may be I and I color, but you are not I and I kind. O oh, Jah, destroy me not with this race concerning which my fathers have warned me. For now, O oh my Lord God, I was thinking that those who appeared to me were my fathers, but I have found them out to be Diablosoch, Aganint, who allured me by this beautiful apparition until I believe them. This is the same thing they're doing right now with the videos, with this technology, you understand, making everything look beautiful, using beauty, you understand, fakery, basically. But now I ask the Oja, Abitu, to deliver me from this race, you understand, from the lower part of the black race, the astray part, among whom I am now staying, as thou didst deliver me from those devils. Send thy angel, thy Melaoth, to draw me out of the midst of them. For I have not myself power to escape from among them. 
When Yared had ended his elot, his prayer, Egeziyavi heard the sustainer, Lotu Subhat, to him be the praise, sent Malaku, his angel, in the midst of them who took Jared and set him upon the mountain and showed him the way and gave him counsel, advice, and then departed from him. Now, this is just a, a part of the, of the back story. You know what I'm saying? In fact, this part of the story was known even in ancient Egypt. It's what Mo, Moses, Moshe, what he learned. So when he wrote Genesis, you know what I'm saying? He did not go into the back story because, remember, the back story, this, this they had already known. You know what I'm saying? This they had already known. And there's, there's still chapter... Um, 18 and chapter 19, and then we even get to chapter 20 when we can see really what went on. Now, all these chapters here in this particular document, right, the Gedra Adam, it actually explains and gives clear evidence to what is being spoken of in Genesis, Genesis chapter 6, upon which white supremacy and counterfeit Christianity is so confused about as they wrestle over whether to go with the Septuagint that the sons of God were angels. You understand? Know were angels of God. That is not true. We're going to give one verse to just kind of prove it and kind of sum up here. But, of course, this is, there's more to this that we want to get into details. But we want to at least give a clear demonstration on the black Adams family. In other words, the real Adam's family. If you go to Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5, it says, For to which of the angels said he at any time? In other words, it says, To which of the angels did John say at any time? The book of Hebrews. Now, if those the Hebrews, it's to the Hebrews. See, we have Gospels to the Romans, to those who were Romans. Either they were, were European of the European, the so-called white extraction, or they were black people, maybe former slaves or whatnot, or free men in Rome, and they had Roman citizenship, as Herodia Paulos also had Roman citizenship. And we have the same thing to, to um, Ephesians, to uh, Corinthians, to these are different places. Like right now, we write to the brothers and sisters in California. So we say this is the epistle to California. You understand, know, to the Rastafari who are in California, you know, so, or that church out in California, or in, or in another part of the world, in France, or in London, or in, you, you know what I'm saying right there? But this now is specifically to the Hebrews, like saying, what is Ethiopian? This is to, like, the Ethiopian. This is to the Hebrews, where it says that God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, Spake in time past to the fathers, to the forefathers, by way of the Nabiyat, the Nabiyat Tanagro, hath in these last days spoken to us. Now, how has he spoken to us in these last days? Was well, very clear. He has spoken to us in these last days by the Son. He has spoken to us in these last days by the Son, by way of His Son, whom He have appointed ear, He is the ear, the inheritor of all things. Remember, He is the second Adam. That means He is of that same original racial type, that Ethiopian type, that black type. You understand? Whom He have appointed ear of all things, by whom also, he made the worlds. You see, when we talk about the black man is God, when we're talking about the black Messiah in spirit and in truth, we're talking about Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Know That's what we mean when we say the black man is God in spirit and in truth. Because he has restored, you understand, know that divinity, that, that relationship, he restored us into the family of God and his Christ, because it's who being the brightness, right? He is the what? He is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And he upholding all things by the word, 
of his power when he had by himself purged our chatiyat, our sin. He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, the samayat, the garmau king, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of Abba, of Abatachin, of Abba Kedus, of Kedus Abatachin on high, being made so much better than the angels. He was made so much, now let's understand that. He is made so much better than the angels. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name, a more excellent renown, a more excellent sim, and more excellent shim or shem than they. For to which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. To which of the angels, Hebrews 1 and 5 says, has he said, you are my son, so how can the angels be the sons of God? Because Hebrews 1 and 5 says, at which time did he say to any of the angels, Ante Lijene, in Nezare, well, Jehalo. What time? To who? And again, to which angel has he said, I will be to him a father? And he shall be to me a son. At which time he says, In the Abbat, Ehonawalo, Ersum, Lij, Yehonanya. To which of them? Yalo, Kato, Lamano. To which of them? So we have to understand that that idea, what he, he trying to tell you that, uh, that, uh, um, that the sons of God were angels. No, the sons of God was with Adam's righteous seed mingling, coming down off of that mountain and mingling with the children of Cain, and the children of Cain had already mingled themselves with the Nephilim. They had already mingled and hybrided themselves with the Nephilim. So when the sons of Seth or the sons of God, who are the sons of Seth from the line of Seth, Finally, when they came down in the days of Jared off of that mountain, and they took among the daughters of men, they were already taking from among the daughters of Cain, who had polluted and defiled their spiritual, their psychological, and their physical genetic code with the fallen angels or the devils and demons. And again... When he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. You see, it's the fallen angels, and it's the deluded men and people, the deceived white supremacy, that doesn't want to recognize the black Christ, or the true humanity of Christ, the flesh of Christ, the woolly headedness of Christ. Begmom, the Korin would alem siagaba. Yeg ziabi her mala ekta huluma la ursu. Yis, yiskedu, yiskedu, yalal. And of the angels, he saith, this is what he says concerning the angels. You know what he says concerning the angels. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. That's why in the clip that we just showed, the, the, the white guy there trying to explain in, in this PowerPoint presentation, say, oh, it's kind of confusing. I can't really explain the technology. But uh, what technology? You know what the technology of copulation is, right? I mean, I mean, what is it to really explain? You know what I'm saying? So you see, that's what it says, like, and what they do know, as, as brute beasts, they, they, they corrupt themselves. You know what I'm saying? They corrupt themselves in it. So, verse 8 says, But to the Son, to the Son, right? To Jesus Christos, to the Son, what does he sayeth? Thy throne, O Jah, O God, Abitu, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness 
is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated rebellion and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee, hath christened thee with the oil of gladness. That's the oil. The oil is the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord Abitu Adoni, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. And they shall be changed, but thou shall, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels, please tell me, white supremacy, to which of the angels saith he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? And besides, which of the angels has ever been called Adoni? Adonai. You understand? Verse 14 to complete the chapter. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be ears of salvation? So see, the true angels are our servants. It's the rebellious angels that we just demonstrated in the, in the Gedla Adam, in this particular document right here. You understand? We just touched on one particular chapter in there. Yeah, I think that was chapter 17. You understand? Um, which book? I think maybe the second, second or so book. But it's in there. You know, check it out for yourself, brothers and sisters. More to come. Y'all willing? Shalom. In the Rastafari home, in the home of the King of Kings and his Christ. Shalom, brothers and sisters.